Today on the show, we're going to be recapping issue number three of Batman Eternal. So this week's issue started off with Stephanie Brown making her grand return to Batman comics, which is really exciting because she is such a good character. Apparently she's left something at her dad's house, so she's going home against her mother's better judgement, and when she walks into her dad's house she finds her father in his Clue Master uniform and somebody knocks her out by hitting her from behind. Straight away this puts me on edge because in the old continuity Stephanie was such a strong character, but straight away in this continuity she's being crapped on. I just don't want her to have to be saved by Batman, she's stronger than that. Please DC, don't mess this up, you already messed up Wally West in the Flash Annual. Next we're at the Gotham Police Department and Major Forbes is crapping all over Jim Gordon and you can just tell the whole thing is really really tense. Also, it's very apparent that some of the people at the police department think that what's going on is all Jim's fault, while others think that something bigger is going on and those are the people that are right and those are the people that you should trust. Meanwhile, the new guy in town is talking to Jim and this scene just reiterates how much the new guy looks up to Jim and does not want to see him behind bars. I really liked the scene, I thought it was very good character building and a very interesting interaction and it definitely set the tone for the rest of the comic and we have an idea of how passionate this new guy is now. Also, by the way the new guy is wording things, it's becoming very apparent that he is probably going to become a hero at some point. If you know what happens in issue number four, the events and that kind of back up my theory there, but we're kind of focusing on issue number three at the moment. Next we're at the Iceberg Casino and Penguin is playing with this girl's emotions and then Batman just comes charging in. Batman just wants to know what Penguin knows about Carmen Falcone, but Penguin knows nothing. Meanwhile, at the Gotham City Hall, Major Forbes is talking to the mayor and Carmen Falcone, and Major Forbes is on the side of Carmen Falcone. Can I just say, I knew this from the start, and so many people in the comments were like, oh my god, the new guy has to be the bad guy. No, that is not how things work in Gotham. The people that have been there for the longest time are the tainted people. The spoiled people in Gotham will always be spoiled. It's really the people in Gotham that gained power without losing anything that you cannot trust and Major Forbes is a good example of this. Anyway, it turns out that Major Forbes is going to be creating distractions for the police so the criminal underworld can get up to no good and the police are all distracted and they won't be able to do anything about it. And then there's a scene in the Batcave which I would have honestly written as just a one page thing, though I do really like the art in it. But anyway, it's just kind of reiterating how everything in Gotham at the moment points back to Falcone. I, I've said it in every recap and I'm going to continue to say it, I mean... Briefs. Next we go back to the Clue Master and Stephanie is on the floor and crying. One of the people that Clue Master is working with tells him that he has to kill his daughter, so he gets up to do so, so Stephanie pulls one of the pins from the smoke grenades and runs for her life. I guess this is all being done to harden Stephanie up a bit. I mean, in the old continuity, yes, Stephanie loved being a hero, but she was definitely a very steely person, if you know what I mean. She had to have a hard outer shell because she dealt with a lot in her life. Her father was a villain and her mother was a manic depressive. Of course she was going to have like a steely outer shell. However, in this continuity, it looks like she's had a generally stable home life, although her parents are separated. As far as she was aware, before now, they were both very happy and on the side of good. But now she's just found out that her father is apparently the Clue Master. The next two pages basically reveal that Falcone has started the war. Penguin versus himself. The two most powerful gangs in Gotham head to head and Batman is having to defend innocence in this war. Keeping in mind the only other Bat family member that I'm aware of that's in Gotham and actually deals with crime syndicates at the moment is Batgirl. This is a huge deal because she's going to be distracted because her father's about to be locked away. Back at the police station, Maggie Sawyer is aware of what's going on and is like, right, we need to stop this right away, but then someone walks in and interrupts her. 
We have a quick glimpse of the Batmobile and it is revealed that the Gotham Police Department have cancelled all calls to the emergency locations, meaning Batman is working single-handedly tonight. Then we go back to the police station and it turns out that Forbes has been made commissioner and he wants to wage war on Batman and like no one in the police station is happy about it. Forbes wants to do this because he believes that when Falcone was in power, the police were treated like gods. But since Batman has been in power, the police have been treated like ordinary citizens, which he is not happy about. I guess this is just a good example of how absolute power corrupts absolutely, even if you go into a job intending to do good. Meanwhile, across town, Stephanie is sat there hiding in a back alley trying to get in contact with her mother. This issue was a bit slow for my liking, but it did need to happen because it was the perfect setup for issue number four, which in turn I think is the perfect setup for issue number five, which isn't out yet, but I know issue number five is going to be great. I do have to say that so far this issue was the weakest issue in terms of art and writing, but I know issue number four was great, so this was just a fluke. If you want to read Batman Eternal, but you don't have a comic shop in your town, I have put a link down below to mycomicshop.com where you can order yourself all the copies of Batman Eternal. Honestly, these recaps are going to be like 10 times better if you do read along with them, because I do leave out some fine details so I don't ruin everything. It's super effective! Okay guys, that is it for today. What was your opinion on Batman Eternal issue number three? Please let me know in the comments down below. And also don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more recaps. And also don't forget to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my gaming channel, and check out my Kickstarter. My name is Faust, this has been Exploring Comics, and it is super effective.